Okay, in part one of hopefully a three-part video series, uh, we took the Razor DXF drift trike down into the crawl space to run it around just to see if I can maneuver down there, test the height on it, turning radius, a couple other things, just see if it was suitable to work down there, and it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, the reason I, I chose the Razor was uh, it'll handle a full-size adult, and I'm about 6'2 on a good day, uh, so it fits me. Uh, it seems to be really well built, well re reviewed. Uh, so after running it down there, I've got a pretty good idea now some of the changes I want to make to it. Uh, the first will be to change out these back tires. Uh, these are hard plastic. They're built for drifting, which isn't a particularly useful attribute down in the crawl space. I think if I get a uh, pneumatic or hard rubber tire, uh, It'll run a lot quieter, a lot easier, and uh, also if I get a smaller diameter, it might put the seat down a little closer to the floor, which hopefully will keep me from having to duck so much down there uh, for the beams. Um, again, they're on a stub axle, so I really don't think it'll be too hard to find those. Uh, the next thing I want to do to it is put some kind of electric motor on it uh, instead of pedaling, just because it's just such a stupid thing to do. Uh, so we'll take the uh, foot cranks off and put some kind of pegs on there just have a place to rest my feet. And I think the best way to go is probably with an electric drill. There's tons of videos on YouTube where people are using electric drills to power this kind of stuff. Um, I like it because it'll be fairly easy to print up or manufacture up a mount for it. Uh, the battery is removable so I can charge it upstairs instead of charging in the basement. I, I still wouldn't trust it down there if it catches fire or something. Uh, I'll either put a friction drive on like this or like this or some type of gear set that will run out. I like the friction drive because it's uh, got a little bit of slip to it so it's probably a little easier on the, the drill. Uh, help prevent it from burning out. We'll repurpose the left hand brake into some kind of throttle control for the drill. Put some kind of gear shift lever on to uh, allow the, me to shift the drill from reverse to forward. Um, I think that'll probably all be fairly straightforward. Uh, and also probably put some kind of LED headlight right around in this area somewhere, just throw a little more light down there. Uh, so I'm looking forward to playing with this stuff and uh, we'll see how it goes. And Get something printed here. I've got a nice little 3D printing cell set up, so hopefully we can knock something out in the next week or so and get it all tested out. So the Thanks. first order of business was to put smaller tires on. These are about 10 inch in diameter. They're hard plastic. Uh, there's a little bit of head clearance down there, so I thought if I could get a smaller wheel on it, um, we could get some extra clearance. Um, so this is what I came up with. These are three inch diameter solid urethane wheels, caster wheels, and uh, they didn't come with bearings in them originally, so we had the machine out of pocket here to receive the, uh, the bearing. It fits in there very nicely, you can tell. And three inches is about the smallest we could go. On the bottom of the razor trike, there's this bolt that sticks out right here, and the three inch gives me about an eighth of an inch clearance from that bolt head to the uh, concrete floor below. So, uh, again, I mentioned these are nine millimeter, I'm sorry, 12 millimeter bores. So, then we had to take up a spacer for the wheel width. Those are also significantly shorter than the other ones. And then the other hardware, standard hardware that came on it. And the only real trick here is we run that nylock up, not to uh, jam it down on there because we don't want to side load the bearing. We just want to use that spacer as a rough guide to keep the wheel from flopping around and to retain the bearing. That's pretty good right there. So. See, it works fine, looks stupid, but it works perfectly and it glides along very nicely. 
Okay, so here is the uh, final conversion of the Razor DXT drift trike to uh, be used down in the crawl space to access the mechanicals. Uh, ended up with a backing plate here, a quarter inch thick uh, ring grade polyethylene sheet. Um, I found a close design online from the University of Colorado uh, and that got me going because they had a Black & Decker grill too. But uh, I think we made some significant changes to it. Um, first and foremost, we put the top gear between a couple of bearing blocks uh, to take the side load off the drill. So they're carrying the load now. This just has a rotational load on it. Uh, the gear is a seven tooth down to a 44 tooth crank. So I think we're right around, I don't know, 6.2 or one, 6.2 to one or something, which is fairly slow, but again, it's for riding down in the basement and uh, I need all the torque I can get. Uh, we also made some changes in the way I've seen a lot of these drills being attached. Usually they have, you know, three, four, five uh, zip ties holding them together. We were able to uh, locate it first off the bearing blocks, get the height set, and then up underneath here is where uh, a uh, magnetic catch for a screwdriver bit would normally go. We put a stud in the sheet and that was able to hang it uh, from that and get the location really good, which left us with just one zip tie to hold it kind of in place. We found I really don't even need it. It's just there kind of a feel good thing. Uh, the throttle is a uh, X-Pro uh, ATV throttle, uh, cable throttle, thumb throttle. Let's see the action of it down here. Uh, but basically, we've got a bell crank uh, and a pivot that pushes this plunger into the trigger and the trigger and the plunger have approximately the same uh, curvature to it. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, with the motion that it makes. Um, not real thrilled about the cable. I don't have any adjustment on it here right now, so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. But right now it's, it's set to work really well. Uh, on the back side of the mounting plate, I uh, 3D printed up all these blocks. Uh, again, the idea was I didn't want to drill any holes or anything into the uh, drift trike itself, so all this stuff could be taken off if it had to be uh, without, again, marring the original trike. So we've got three sets on this side, another two on the other side, um, and they're just compression fit on with uh, 1024 screws seems to work pretty well. Um, again, the bottom crank was just a crank I had laying around from a different bike project. And we just cut the uh, foot peg off. And uh, I've got a little sanding on that too, because that's gonna tear me up one of these days. Um, the foot pegs that we put on here for, to rest our feet are just uh, slightly modified from a uh, motorcycle foot peg. Um, but those seem to work pretty good. Again, we've got the uh, casters on the back, the ball bearings uh, on those. And the whole idea there was to lower the uh, seat so when I was in the crawl space, I didn't have to duck to go underneath anything. And we did add a, uh, a headlamp on here. Just throw a little more light off down in the bottom. Uh, pet peeve with all these Chinese manufacturers, these LED lights, always, there's just no on off. You always have to cycle through three modes uh, to get to you know, on and off. And I just wish they had a simple on off switch. Uh, we did leave the original brake on. Uh, didn't need to do anything with that. I'd hope to get a reverse gear out of this, but not knowing that much about brakes. Of course, this is a coaster wheel, or bike set is. This is a coaster wheel and there's no way to put a reverse on it. So. So that's about it. Uh, let's put a battery on it and take it for a quick spin in the driveway. So here we go.
And there you have it, our drift bike conversion. Success.